Hello Year 5, welcome to your big math session for Tuesday the 12th of January. You will need your maths book today because we're going to be practicing our click skills, so our counting, our learn it, our it's nothing new and our calculation skills. Uh, so make sure you write the title big maths in your book just underneath whatever you last did and today's dates. We're going to start off with our counting skills and this week we're looking at squiggle worth. Uh, and we ask that question, what is each squiggle worth? OK, so here is my number and I'm thinking each of these squiggles on the page um, or digits, as we sometimes call them, what does it represent in that number? So this two doesn't actually stand for two in this number, two ones, um, but it actually stands for something else. OK, um, so you're going to need to write out my six digit number and you're going to need to partition it using your um, ruler to make some lines and then to tell me what each part stands for. And I'm just going to show you this one so you know how I expect you to do that. So I know that we know that it's seven tens, um, but we're showing it as 70. That's the part of that number that seven represents. Um, so could you do the same for all of the other digits? Partition that number. Um, so pause, write the number down and partition it. Um, and we'll talk about it when you press play. So my number is 625,974. So I know that this four stands for four. It represents four. I've already spoken to you about the seven tens representing 70. I've got nine in my hundreds column. Uh, so that represents nine hundreds, uh, 900. I've got five in my thousands column, so that represents 5,000. I've got two in my 10,000s column, so that represents 20,000. And I've got six in my 100,000s column, so that represents 600,000. OK, so for our learn it this week, we are um, practicing some new edition um, facts. Uh, last week we did two edition facts. This week we've got three. Um, and of course, um, these are fairly simple um, addition facts, but our aim is to be able to know them straight away and have that quick recall so that if someone says to you nine add four, straight away in your head, you're thinking 13. So that's why we're practicing these. Um, all of our addition facts are adding four this week. So I've got seven add four equals 11, eight add four equals 12, nine add four equals 13. You might be able to think of some ways to remember those. So you might think seven add three is 10. I know that it's a number bond. So I just need to add on one more to add four instead of three and that will make 11. Uh, it's up to you how you practice those. Uh, you might put them on a post-it note and put them on the fridge and get someone to test you all week, um, a bit like you could do with your times tables, but that's totally up to you, okay? So um, in a moment, I'll ask you to pause the video and just practice these addition facts however you would like to maybe you'll chant them out loud maybe you'll write them down maybe you'll do that with somebody else who's at home and available um, so just spend a moment practicing those addition facts and pause your video now okay for our it's nothing new we are working on coin multiplication this week uh, and we are looking at a coin card, which I know you have seen before, if you've been in the school um, in previous years. So have a think, see if you can remember why this is called a coin card. What's it got to do with coins? Look particularly at these numbers. So the reason it's called a coin card is these are all um, numbers that you would find on our coins. So we've got 1p coins. 2p, 5p, 10p, 20p, 50p, and then our 100p is our pound coin, isn't it? And we can use these coin cards to practice our multiplication um, and then to solve some multiplication calculations in our heads. So the way we do this is we draw our two lines. We're multiplying by 32 today, so that's why I've got times 32 here. And then I write up my numbers 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50 and 100. Um, and today I'm not going to ask you to do this in your books. I'm just going to show you how to do it um, together. And then on the following days, you can do one in your book. Obviously, if you'd like to do it in your book, 
anyway today that's fine you can pause the video at any point um but i'm just going to be talking through how to do it okay so when i'm doing a coin card i always start with the ones that i think are the most straightforward so i know what one times 32 is one times 32 is 32 okay and I can also now use my 1 times 32 to help me with some others. So 10 times 32 I can do because I know how to multiply it by 10. So 10 times 32 is 320. And then it's a very similar skill when I'm multiplying by 100. What, 32 multiplied by 100 is 3200. And I can now use these three facts to help me with some of the others. So I can take my 1 times 32 and I can double it to find 2 times 32, which is 64. I can take my 10 times 32, which is 320, and double it to make 20 times 32, which is 640. I can take my 10 times 2 again and halve it, divide it by 2 to get 5 times 32. So I've got 320 and I'm going to halve it. Half of 300 is 150 and half of 20 is 10. So half of 320 is 160 and that's 5 times 32. And then I can use my 100 times to halve that to make 50 times. Or I can take my 5 times 32 and multiply it by 10 to get 50 times. OK, so I've got options there. But 50 times is 1,600. So when you first look at that, that can look a little bit daunting, but actually once you do the ones that you know straight away first, you can use them to help you with the others. Now I've done that coin card, I can use it to help me solve some mental multiplications. So the question says, can you now use the coin card to work out what 11 multiplied by 32 is? Well, look at the coin card and think about which facts would help you with 11 multiplied by 32. OK, so I personally would use 10 times 32 and 1 times 32 to make 11 times 32. So I know 10 times 32 is 320 and 1 times 32 is 32. So I can add those together to find out what 11 multiplied by 32 is. 11 multiplied by 32 is 352. OK, so in the following days in Big Maths, we will be practising our coin card skills um, and using them to help us to solve some mental multiplication. And our last click skill um, is going to be a calculation skill and it is addition. So we're adding two um, numbers that have got one decimal place um, with some exchanging. Now this here is a skill that you have already done and I know that you can do it. So I've got here the calculation 0.3 as 0.2. And the way that we've been using to do this is we think of this as adding 3 and 2. And then we remember it's not adding 3 and 2, it's adding 3 tenths add 2 tenths. And because I know that 3 add 2 is 5, I know that 3 tenths add 2 tenths is 5 tenths, which is the same as 0.5. Hopefully you can remember how to do that. Now I've got a calculation here um, and I've written the question, how is this different? I've got 0 0.8 add 0 0.9. How is that different to doing this skill? Why might it be slightly more challenging than doing 0 0.3 add 0 0.2? So I think the reason why this calculation is a little bit more challenging is because when I do 0.3 add 0.2, um, I only have to look at the tenths column. There is less than 10 tenths, so I don't have to look at any of the other columns. However, when I'm doing 0.8 add 0.9, I end up with more than 9 tenths, and I can't put more than 9 tenths into my tenths column. OK, so I know that 8 add 9 is 17. So I've got 17 tenths. I can't put 17 into one column. OK, and I'm not going to write it like this. 0.17 because that would be one tenth and seven hundredths. 
So instead what I do, just like I would with any of my other place value, I look at the column next to it. So I think I've got 17 tenths, that's the same as seven tenths, and one whole. 10 tenths makes one whole. So 0 0.8 added to 0 0.9 equals 1.7. OK, we will be practising those skills throughout the week in our big math sessions. Uh, so make sure that you watch the video and have a go yourself. Um, and do let us know if you have any questions. Um, and just another reminder from me to practice your times tables on Times Table Rockstars. We are looking at the eight times table this week um, and I'm looking forward to seeing who's been practicing at home. Thank you, Year 5. Have a fantastic day um, and I will see you again soon.